welcome back. Hopefully you've digested a bit about the unit of the Henry and the concept of inductance. The other thing maybe you did is you looked up a little bit about Joseph Henry. If you didn't, I encourage you to go learn a little bit about him. Um, the next part of this is looking at how the induced voltage decays with time. So this decay that occurs happens really quickly. And if you look at these time intervals, 0.5 seconds to 0.505 seconds, that's five thousandths of a seconds later, and the voltage has already decayed pretty rapidly. That's why we have to use a very fast sample time to even see this using 2,000 or 5,000, or maybe even 10,000 samples a second. So the the decay should look a little familiar. It has this characteristic exponential decay shape. So let's go over here. I have a sample where we looked at a little bit of a decay. This was one of the triggered runs. The, the uh, Logger Pro system started recording as soon as it measured a voltage surge above a certain amount, and then went really fast in order to capture the rapid decay. Now, we have this parameter C that exists in this. So we're looking at V is, as a function of time, is equal to some A times E to the minus C times T. And then there is this final plus B. Make that look more like a times T. Another way to consider this is V is a function of time equal to some v naught, some initial spike, times e to the minus t over tau. Why would I write it that way? Well, I know that t will have to be in seconds. It means tau also has to be in seconds. This right here is what we call the time constant. Very similar to the time constant for capacitors where we had the resistance times the capacitance of the circuit gave us the charging or discharge rate for the capacitor. In this case, we don't have a capacitor as part of the circuit. We have a resistor and we have an inductor. And those two are going to couple together to give us a time constant. It'll be a little different from the, the capacitor time constant. So how can I figure out how R and L, the values of resistance and inductance, can give us this decay time constant. I'm going to look at the units, the dimensions. So the Henry, I said that the Henry could be looked at as ohms times seconds. So if I want to end up with something that has units of seconds, I'm going to take my resistance and I'm going to do something, some operation, with my inductance value. And this will give me my time constant. One very surefire way to figure out how this is going to work out, this is going to seem a bit more abstract, but this is a way to always figure out how equations will be made from just dimensions. I can say r to the a power and l to the b power is going to give me my time constant tau. And I know that my r is just going to be ohms. And this is going to be raised to the a power. And my inductance is going to be in Henry's. But I can say that this is going to be ohms times seconds. That's where I'm using this definition. And this is going to be raised to the b power. And this is going to give me a unit or units of seconds, because tau, the time constant, has to have units of seconds. Now, I need an A and a B exponents such that the ohms will cancel out and I'm left with seconds. So if I want seconds and I know this is going to be the first power, that means B has to be 1. There's no other way this is going to work out to have a one, have one factor of seconds in my final unit. So by process of elimination here, A would have to be the power 
of minus 1. So that means I would have ohms times seconds over ohms. This gives me seconds. The ohms cancel out. What does this mean for constructing my time constant from resistance and capacity or resistance and inductance values? That means I have the inductance is on top and the resistance is on the bottom. So my RL time constant is actually an L over R. So this time constant tau equals the inductance divided by the resistance. In this case, my circuit has a has an inductance value of five millihenries, that's the inductor that's attached to the vernier board, divided by in this case it's not just the value of resistor in there, it's the total resistance. And this is going to be fifteen ohms. Again, because the 15 is the 10 ohms from the resistor plus the 5 ohms from the inductor. So this is the resistor and this is the inductor. So the total resistance of my circuit is 15 ohms. I can't divide 5 millihenries by 15 ohms. I need to do a unit or a metric prefix uh, change. This would be 0 0.005 henrys divided by 15 ohms. We've always already established that a henry divided by an ohm gives us seconds. I'll let one note give me a little bit of calculation help here. 0 0.005 divided by 15. So this is 0 0.0003 seconds. Now the C parameter in Logger Pro, so the C of Logger Pro, again those capital C's uh, being very annoying, is equal to 1 over the time constant, which is the same as 1 over L over R, which is the same as R over L. So I calculated a time constant of 0 0.0003 seconds, or 0.3 milliseconds. So the inverse of that, let's let, logger, or let's let one node help us again, 1 divided by 0 0.0003 equals 3,333.3333333 ad infinitum. So this is really close. to this value of C right here. And this value of C um, that I'm actually measuring is actually having to deal with the resistance of everything else in the circuit and the fact that the inductor might not be exactly five millihenries. Uh, but this is pretty close. Again, this is matching a time constant, um, but in a little different way to things that we can fit, uh, things we can measure, plot a graph, and then do a curve fit in Logger Pro. So these things are matching up. Um, there's a lot that goes into this, but again, the numbers we get are matching up. Um, based on the, the values of the components that go into these circuits.